Blog Talk Radio. So the most high is going to stop the flowing of the people going into that country, read. Jeremiah chapter 51, uh, the end of verse 44. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Verse 45. My people, go ye out out of the midst. Hold up, read that again. My people, go ye out of the midst. I of think, her. I think within this chapter, he said, please get out of her around three, four times. Right? Read. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Most High Ahiah. And let your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor. And by wars and rumors of wars, you hear about it, and because it's not happening, you think it's not going to happen. Read. Verse 46. Uh, end of verse 46. And violence in the land. Ruler against ruler. Verse 47. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon. And her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon. For the spoiler shall come up unto her from the north, saith the Most High Ahia. As Babylon hath called the slain of Israel to fall, so as Babylon shall call the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still. Remember the Most High Ahia afar off. And let Jerusalem come into your mind. Listen to this clear. Ye that have escaped the sword, that means you escaped the destruction that coming to Babylon, go away and stand not still. So when you leave, remember the power or the God, a higher or far off. And let Jerusalem come into your mind. That that looking forward, not looking back. Now let Jerusalem come into your mind. She's finished. Right? Read. Verse 51. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame has covered our faces. For strangers are coming to the sanctuary of the Lord's house. Strangers have destroyed us. Strangers have destroyed our sanctuary, our belief. The un- they destroy our understanding so that we cannot connect to our God. They have given us their God. Baal, Baal, Satan, the dragon, Moloch. These are the gods we've been worshiping ignorantly. Jesus. Zeus. Okay, we ain't know nobody named Jesus. Total madness. And then when we wake up and understand these things, we say, well, hold up. I'm a stranger here. You dragged me here. And the most high starts reviving us. They're like, okay, we have one who's the extremist. You're a terrorist. Read on. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 52. Wherefore, behold, the days come, says the most high of life, that I will do judgment upon her graven images. You're going to destroy all your images and your idols. And, and, and man, if you look at... If you even look at Washington, D.C., it's, it's idol after idol, monuments of idols, oblix, which is man's personal member. That's what uh, oblix is. What's that, the Washington Monument? Idols every place. Five-pointed stars every place. But what if some did not believe? So what if you don't believe what they Paul asked, so what if do something I believe? Shall your unbelief make the faith of God without effect? You mean the most high is going to stop this whole program because you don't believe so? No, you're dead. That's what you are. Okay, he has, his program was before us. And it will be well after us. And that's, that's for the people that's walking out there. They want to say wars all the time. They've always been these situations. Every few years this happens. Nothing is going to change. That's a dead man. Shabbalam, Barakatam, Matawa. Peace for Sabbath. Bless you all. Thank you for listening to another episode of Friday Night Sabbath.
Welcome to Babylon here on blogtalkradio.com for the Gathering of Christ Church. This is Brother from Karab, and I hope that you brothers and sisters can hear me out and clear. Uh, uh, I've had some uh, technical issues for the past few weeks, so haven't been able to do the show how we normally do it. Uh, so we are going to try something uh, different to ho- hopefully uh, be able to bring a clear broadcast to you all tonight. Um, for whatever reason, if there's any troubles, then we we may have to just revert back to what we've done the past few weeks, which is say some new music. I uh, have a lot of brothers and sisters sending in a lot of new music, so definitely opportunity to play that uh, so brothers and sisters can um, hear the new uh, truth music that's being, you know, uh, made by young and talented brothers and sisters out there. It is August 30, 2013, and the time is 4.10 p.m. Central Standard Time. And um, a lot of the information we would like to discuss go over tonight. A lot of things happening is the reason why I try my best to, uh, to, to be able to be on the broadcast tonight. I got a lot of information. So it would be the most I will. We'll definitely uh, go through it. Much as can. Right, when he prays, Ahia, in the name of his son, Christ Shia, to be able to be here for the broadcast, also to partake in another Sabbath day. Just started tonight, we're going to go through the church announcements for all the new listeners, or those that may not know, uh, just different means and ways where you can listen and, and reach the Christ Church. All right. All right, so just get off from Brother Azariah that the uh, connection and reception is here. That's a blessing. Um, so go ahead and go through the church announcements. Friday night Sabbath is every Friday night. Here on Radio for the Guys Church. Show times is 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Pacific time. All right. Um, you listen to us. We have guest calling, which is 646-200. We also have the website, which is www.blockradio.com. GOC Church. Calling to one, which has calling to if you have a question or a comment. All shows are archived. So if you missed the show or you want to go back and listen, and check out the archives. On um, Wednesday night, we have the Gathering of Christ Church International Search Engine. Same show time, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Pacific. On uh, Saturdays, we have the uh, OC Sabbath class on Ustream. The site is www. Uring TV slash channel slash T H E and G C High Search comes down around 10 a.m. Eastern by Elder Karshia Lawyer. At that, you have the law class with R. Yashala out in York around 3 a.m. to archive and watch the show. If you're looking to join the you can by Academy or contact her the email is Gabby as the number one at AOL.com. If you need to reach the church by phone number, the phone number is 888-34-33. All right. If you're in the Texas area and you look for fellowship back to the Things of that nature, make sure that you send an email G O C C T X A at Ymail Dom or you simply be a phone call to nine seven two seven nine three seventy sixty eight. All right now, well, tonight we're going to be going into the burdens of Damascus and Babylon. We're going to go to some extensive news regarding what's going on in the prophecy. And 
Center. We're going to do some detail quotes for uh, understanding and break so that brothers and sisters can understand the, the timeline where we're at and how these things are going to play themselves out in uh, the future. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play a couple tracks. And when we come back, we'll go over the news, current events, and prophecy. Your money is worthless. The government think it's funny because they did it on purpose. What you looking at them soldiers for? Wonder why they banging on your door. Like you don't know. I hate to say I told you so. 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 This one goes out to all the people who wouldn't take heed Who think sin is legal and the law is no need When Christ comes back, how will they plead? Guilty, Why? because off a lot they feed And instead of the truth, they rather smoke weed When the streets are big guns chasing girls and greed So before I proceed, remember that time on the block When I was talking about the star lock Come trucks and FEMA camps in the government's plot Rex 84 and Wild Markham got shot Cash will dry up, bank doors will eventually shut So stop chasing the dream, the whole system corrupt Wake up, you're from the seat of Jacob The condition of the curses is part of the makeup But they wouldn't listen, man I swear they are the same Black, white, Muslim and Christian Pay attention while I mention Your money is worthless The government think it's funny cause they did it on purpose What you looking at them soldiers for? Wonder why they banging on your door Like you don't know I hate to say I told you so
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now the scripture for broadcast, which is Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, be on the Sabbath day. And this takes us right into the prophecy and the events and the news of everything that's going on right now. Uh, so I'm going to talk more about the scripture here in a moment, but just want to kind of overview of everything that's transpired. You had, um, I mean, you pretty much would have to have been sleeping under a rock not to have heard all the news that's been going on with Syria where there was a chemical weapons attack and the U.S. government quickly came out and announced that this attack was done by the Syrian government and the Assad regime. All right, from there you had the Syrian government come out, say that they had no deal with the chemical attack. Uh, in the process, they were able to find chemical weapons in a nearby so-called rebel tunnel where they said that they have proof that the rebels used the chemical weapons. Now, mind you, all of this was going on the day after UN inspectors came to investigate chemical weapons allegations uh, of use by uh, against the Syrian government by NATO powers, the EU, America, Israel, etc. Um, so from there, you've had a slew of news and speeches and news briefings done by the White House. Uh, spokespersons, um, it's just been so much going on news regarding this. Now, fast forward, forwarding up to today, you had a news conference given by Secretary of State John Kerry, who came out and said they have no shadow of a doubt that the Syrian government has used these chemical weapons. Uh, at the time, there wasn't any evidence that's brought forth that they keep uh, boasting that they have for uh, over a week now. They've been boasting having these chemical weapons uh, evidence that was used by the Syrian government. Um, a lot of people may not, but John Kerry is uh, George Bush, George U. Bush, his cousin. And he's also a Skull and Bones member. He's a replacement for Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. Um, now, also some people may not be aware of is that the attack that happened happened a year to the day, meaning it's a year anniversary of the day that Obama gave his speech. There's a red line that if Syria uses chemical weapons, the government that is, that they are red line where America will have to be in Syria as far as militarily. So that is ironic that that would happen a year to the day that Obama gave this speech. I'm just going to read some of the headlines going on right now, and then we're going to actually go to some news. And then at the end of the news, we're going to go into a, a, a actual scriptural breakdown, hopefully to give clarity and understanding of what's going on, what this means, the timeline. And again, uh, the name of the show is The Burdens of Damascus and Babylon. All right, so you have Turkey wants regime change in Syria. Break news. Prime Minister in Turkey seeking regime change. He'd rather have these changes than a attack on Syria. After John Kerry gave his speech about the America going to fight through with attack, Syria State TV 
released uh, some news that said that the U.S. claims on Syria chemical attack are false, and that Syria has has dismissed false U.S. allegations. It had anything to do with these chemical weapons attacks that happened in the past week. Uh, it says, UN says, analysis of Syria sent by experts must be complete before conclusions are drawn. So the UN team is still doing their analysis for determining what is going on and who used these weapons. Will Syria war vote defeat isolate UK? David Cameron's defeat to secure MP support for Syria invasion rattles UK's international standing. So for those that may not know, the, uh, the British Parliament had a, a, a uh, vote, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, to where they have uh, unanimously decided not to have anything to do with a strike in Syria and joining with America's demands to the strategy. Will Obama doom himself as war criminal? That's very key. We're going to talk about that also. Will Obama doom himself as war criminal? U.S. stocks fall as drums of war beaten. So as these drums are beating, U.S. stock markets are falling. U.S. lawmakers seek debate before war. U.S. divided over attack on Syria. All right. So these are some of the headlines that are going on right now. And we're going to go into some news, but I want to talk about Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. As we are now come out of summer season and going into fall, we know fall is followed by winter. So all of the events that are happening right now and that we're going to discuss tonight are going to lead into the wintertime. Also, all of these things happening is perfect timing going into the Sabbath, which is Friday night, starting Friday night. Everybody that works paid, it's payday. People that are on social benefits, food stamps, things like that, hey, just you, you get that filled up and maxed out starting this time going into the Labor Day weekend. Football season for college is starting as well. So you have the American people highly distracted, all these things happening at once. And this is where their mind focused. A perfect time to do what America is about to do in launching this war. American people's mind is more on. There's a term that has been overused lately by the generation. This term is referred to as being turned up, which means, uh, you know, getting drunk, getting high, going crazy. It's just the whole Aleister Crowley concept of do what thou wilt, whatever you want, and just get wild within the spirit of Bacchus. Uh, that's what the term being turned means. It means being literally to get lit. Um, there's a lot of other terms that go into that, but this is what the American people's mind is focused on right now with this holiday, which we call Hella Days and Labor Day, a day in which 
the elite, the rulers of the darkness of this world who are called the elite, give to the American sheeple a, a day dedicated to your slavery, Labor Day, and being good slaves and, and being good laborers. This what this day is all about, and uh, American people are drunk and get drunk spiritually and physically uh, these pagan days and the spirit of bias. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, so when Christ said, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, the understand going into the winter, to 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 make everything that's about to happen a perfect time and event going into the winter time this war and the Sabbath day to launch this World War Three hot of it uh, on the, on the Sabbath is what it's looking like right now is this is going to happen uh, you know within the next 24 hours based upon the speech given by. John Kerry, uh, I believe Obama has just given a speech or he wanted to give a speech on what's going to happen. So let's go to some, some news articles here. We have a lot of news to read through before we go with the scriptural breakdown of it all. First, we have here on the telegraph.co.uk. It says, Western Atlantis, Syria, likely to begin with barrage of more than 100 missiles in 48-hour blitz. This was August 27, 2013, when this article was released. It says, a British and American attack to punish Syria for using weapons will see the two allies launch a barrage of more than 100 missiles in a blitz lasting up to 48 hours, according to military inside and diplomatic, re, uh, di diplomatic sources. Now, we know that Britain has since stepped out uh, at the moment of having anything to do with a strike on Syria with America. A Royal Navy Trafalgar-class submarine will join forces with American warships in the Mediterranean to fire Tomahawk cruise missiles in an attack that is likely to begin within days. The missiles will be unleashed to destroy Mr. Assad's command and control facilities, weapons centers, intelligence bases, and militia training camps. Military commanders sealed agreement on the scope of attacks with regional allies and the Syrian opposition. Officials at a two-day summit in Amman said last night. The two-day meeting in Jordan saw General Martin Dempsey, the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs, and General Sir Nick Hofton, the head of Britain's armed forces, set out detailed war plans to service chiefs from 10 countries. A Jordanian official said there was a consensus that the international community must take action in Syria and that missile strikes by naval or, or air forces would be the best response. The attack would be strictly limited to punishing the Assad government for using chemical weapons rather than designed to tip the balance in favor of the rebels and destroy his government. So this is what we're being told. That this is a strictly limited strike. A limited strike and not to have any uh, bearing on joining the side of the so-called rebels in Syria to help them the war but if that was the case that that was true then why would the American government be backing the rebels with weapons which is open within a month or two they were sending weapons now to these rebels. So if you weren't trying to tip the balance in the war, then why would you be stockpiling weapons to these so-called rebels? Also, the limited strike, when you're talking about unleashing 
more than 100 missiles in a 48-hour blitz. That sounds like a limited strike. Or if that's maybe what they term limited. Number three, Russia, China, and Iran have all stated that an attack on Syria is an attack on them and they will retaliate. So there's no way that it could be an attack if it's going to draw in all countries in a war to attack. The initial attack may be limited, but in the short term, in the long term, it will spark to World War III. The hot spark. Um, of course, we know World War Three started with George Bush declaring weapons of mass destruction and going into Iraq and Afghanistan. That started it all. That, but that was a soft start to the war. But this would be a hot start. Right? The salvos would be fired from U.S. and British submarines currently deployed in the Mediterranean and four American destroyers positioned in the area. American forces would launch the vast majority of missiles. So America is saying that we'll do most of the work. But the Royal Navy is understood to have a Trafalgar-class sub ready to go, which can fire missiles from its torpedo tubes while submerged, sources said. So, of course, we know that as right now, UK is out of the picture as of right now. Proposals have been brought for standoff strikes by planes firing missiles from out of Syrian airspace to avoid the, the regime's extensive air defenses. A senior official, Ben Jordan, said that the rebel command in the U.S. had swapped information on key targets that should be included in any offensive operation. The official, a former general, defected the regime's air force, said that the important places that will be attacked includes the significant weapons depots, the headquarters of top military units, missile launch sites, the ways of military airports, and air defenses. Chemical stockpiles are unlikely to be traced themselves, though. Attacks on Assad's stores of mustard and nerve toxins could trigger deadly chemical leaks or make the arsenals vulnerable to plunder by jihadist rebel groups. Following several days of war cabinet sessions with his national security team and Pentagon chiefs, Prince Burma leads to favor a campaign of up to 48 hours. As well as cruise missiles, Mr. Obama... His advisors and generals have been debating how heavily to use long-range bombers and fighters to pound targets from outside Syrian airspace in so-called standoff strikes. The jets would release joint air-to-surface cruise missiles that can be fired from 100 miles away to avoid exposing U.S. pilots to Syria's large, although outdated, air defense system. The fine-tuning the military plan has been how positive these should be. A Pentagon advisor to David Grab. Simply punish him for using chemical weapons as a, as a warning not to do so again, or do we take out the ability to keep weapons good? Chris Harmer, a former senior naval officer now working for the Institute for the Study of War, drew up a document earlier this year outlining operations for limited several cruise missile strikes. I think the most effective tactic is to deny further use of Kim weapons will take a Syrian force, he said. U.S. planes could not fly out of air bases and Cyprus and Turkey could fly out of Cyprus. Two U.S. aircraft carriers that have been waters around the Gulf may all be in the Red Sea. Pentagon staff planners have also drawn plans to deploy F-22s and 15s in Saudi Arabia and Jordan to provide security, reassurance, America's most important air allies, and as a backup for air war operations. However, Jordanian officials 
of retaliation last night said they refused to be a launch pad attacks against Syria. Mr. Obama remains extremely wary of mission creep and is resolutely opposed to boot on the ground or even imposing no-fly zones. The U.S. also want Assad to lose control of his chemical weapon stockpiles to extremist rebels. The goal is to prevent him using them again. So when you listen to this rhetoric that's been given by America and the allies that are that are all for these strikes in Syria, it's it's really total confusion. And one breath they're saying you know, we don't really want to typically want to stop Assad from using nuclear weapons again, which they still haven't proved that he's done. So, you know, do we just hit him where it hurts, so we take him out completely as being a leader. When they're, they've been funding and flying the rebels there since the war began. Uh, but at the same time, you're saying, well, we don't want the chemical weapons to be lost to extremist rebels. Well, what is going to happen when you attack Syria and the Syrian government is no longer there to, to defend those stockpiles of chemical weapons? Whose hands are they going to fall into? They're going to fall into the hands of those who you're helping. So it's total confusion when you listen America speak. And it's allies. Is is uh, typical. Very very typical. So um, so let's go to the next article. Press TV. Dot ir. It says you are able to attack Syria even without supporting, without support from UN. Or eyes. This uh, dated August 28th. The U.S. administration says it is willing to take military action against Syria even without the United States' approval or support from its allies. So basically, America is saying we will go and do this striking and this preemptive war by ourselves. That's what we and this is key. Because what we're seeing is that they sing out of America with all the with all these events because you have European countries now that are dropping out of the side of America. UK has dropped out. Italy has against these strikes. So you're going to see only but surely countries that are neutral or totally opposed to what America is about to do, that were once or slaw our American allies. And this is key, and we're going to talk about this in this prophecy concerning what this means. State Department spokeswoman Mary ha- Marie Harf says a possible U.N. rejection of her country's plan to Syria will not dissuade the U.S. administration from going forward. Russia is most likely to reject United States request to authorize a military action in Syria. We could not be held up in response by serious, I'm sorry, by Russia's and intransigence, continued intransigence at the UN, Marie Hart said. The situation is so serious that it demands a response. Washington and its allies, including Britain and France, have accused the Syrian government forces of carrying out a recent chemical attack on the outskirts of Damascus without providing any evidence. The MAF has vehemently denied the accusation as baseless. UN inspectors who are in Syria at the invitation of the Syrian government have yet to release their findings over the attack. Now, we talked about these U.N. inspectors being in Syria to, to analyze and try to see what's going on. They're supposed to be leaving tomorrow. They're supposed to be leaving tomorrow, which would 
open up the door for a, an attack once they leave, which would go into the idea that this strike could possibly happen on the Sabbath. It could happen on a on the, the time when America is so called quote unquote turned up on Labor Day weekend in college football and all the other things that happen that they're doing on the Sabbath day defiling it. Uh here it says the UN Secretary General has also said the UN inspectors in Syria should be given more time to investigate the attack. So here it is, the U.N. is saying, give us some time so we can fully analyze and investigate what's going on. But America is prompt, like we got to do this now. So you can see the urgency coming from America and the White House as far as the government is concerned. There's a timetable here. All of these things that are happening are time sensitive. They have to happen within a specific frame of time to fit agenda. It is essential to establish the facts. A U.N. investigation team is now on the ground to do, to do just that. Just days after the attack, they have collected valuable samples and interviewed victims and witnesses. The team needs time to do its job, said Ban Moon in The Hague on Wednesday. U.S. President Barack Obama, in an interview with PBS NewsHour, however, said that Washington concluded that the Syrian government carried out the chemical attack. He made the remarks as a group of Bush-era neoconservative officials wrote a letter to him saying that the U.S. and other willing nations should consider direct military strikes against the pillars of the Syrian government. Right? So, uh, so let's talk about the U.N., and what has transpired with some of the findings. This comes off of LiveTradingNews.com. It says, You an official, Syrian rebels use sarin nerve gas, not Assad's army. This is August 27, 2013. It says, testimony from victims now strongly suggests that it was the rebels, not the Syrian government, that used sarin nerve gas during a recent incident in the revolution-wracked nation, a senior U.N. diplomat said Monday. Carla Del Ponte, a member of the U.N. Independent International Commission of Inquiry on Syria, told Swiss TV there were strong, concrete suspicions but not yet in con, uh, incontrovertible proof that rebels seeking to oust Syrian President Bashar al-Assad had used her agent. But she said her panel had not yet seen any evidence of Syrian government forces using chemical weapons, according to the BBC. She added that more investigation was needed. Damascus is facing growing Western accusations that its forces use such weapons, which U.S. President Obama had described as crossing a red line. But Ms. Del Ponte's remarks may serve to shift the focus of national concern. Ms. Del Ponte, who in 1999 was appointed to, to head the U.N. War Crimes Tribunal for Yugoslavia and Rwanda, has sometimes been a controversial figure. She was removed from her Rwanda post by the United States Council in 2003, but she continued as the chief prosecutor for the Yugoslavia Tribunal until 2008. Rebel Free Syrian Army spokesman Lue Al Almakdad denied that rebels had used weapons. So here we have. Carla Del Ponte saying there is evidence, suspicions, for proof that this was done by the rest of us. But there is no evidence that they have found so far to say that the Syrian government has done this. So why isn't the mainstream news talking anything about this claim by the UN? Because I just read. 
in the last article that the U.S. is willing to attack Syria even without support from the U.N. And one breath is saying, well, the U.N. needs to go and be able to do these inspections. And the next breath is saying, well, regardless of what they come up with, regardless, we're going to strike anyway. So this is the beast in action. Who is going to stop the beast? Who can make war with the beast? America does what it wants when it wants. That's why the scriptures refer to America as Babylon. Babylon means a tyrant, tyranny. So let's go to the next article because this UN coming out and saying that the Syrian rebels use chemical weapons is not the first time. They've actually come out and said this on more than one occasion. In the past, when these so-called chemical weapons attacks were blamed on the Syrian government, they've also come out and said that wasn't the case. It was the rebels. But, of course, when you watch Obama or Kerry or Biden, any of these figures, McCain, these are things they will never address in the media. It's like they don't even exist, and they're just tunnel vision on war, war, war. We have to get this thing going. We have to get these strikes going. Now let's go to endtimeheadlines.wordpress.com. August 28, 20, breaking news. Iran joins Israel in threats. Thousands of missiles to rain on Israel. War drums. Iran is threatening to launch a massive missile strike against Israel. The U.S. attacks Syria for using chemical weapons against its own people, which cuts off a full-blown war in the region. The day of reckoning is near, according to Hossein Syriat Matari, the chief editor of Kihan newspaper, an outlet controlled by Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. An op-ed penned by Syriat Madari Tuesday warned that the impending confrontation between the West and Syria would provide long-awaited opportunity for revenge against Israel and America. The editor recalled the U.S.-led attack on Baghdad on March 20, 2003, and President George W. Bush's boast to reporters seven days later that the Iraq war was over. But when the last U.S. soldiers were leaving Iraq in December 2011, nearly 4,500 Americans had been killed. The war had cost America trillions of dollars. <clears throat> Sharia Madari said that Washington, instead of open war against Syria, has been waging a proxy war against the Assad regime with the help of Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan, and Egypt. He said now it is ready to directly confront Syria militarily. One of the members of the resistance front, along with Iran and Lebanon's Hezbollah. However, despite Syrian rebels receiving financial and military support from those Middle Eastern countries, not only has the Assad regime not been overthrown, but it has opened a new chapter for the resistance where it formed the forces of defense of homeland, a force similar to the besieged militias in Iran. Iran has long drawn a red line around the Assad regime, and Hezbollah and Lebanon, Israel's neighbor, are armed with thousands of missiles. The three members of the resistance front have a joint war room. Because of the failure of the intended proxy war, America and some Arab and European countries are preparing to attack Syria on the false claims that the Assad regime has used chemical weapons, the editor said. However, America can certainly start the war, but it won't be the one to end it. Sharia Madari said that it is the Achilles heel of America and its European allies. And without a doubt, with the start of an attack on Syria, thousands of missiles were rain down all over the occupied lands of Israel which will destroy its physical facilities, as it was obvious 
that its missile defense systems, the Iron Dome, could not prevent mi missiles reaching Tel Aviv. He also warned Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Turkey, and others who support attacking Syria that they themselves will come under attack from Syria. Muslims should welcome the news of an attack on Syria as it will provide a long-awaited opportunity for revenge, which should destroy the enemies of Islam, Sharia Madari concluded. So with the same token, you have Iran and the Muslim world itching for this war also because of their religion and their beliefs. Sayyid Reza Takavai, the head of Iran's Policy Council of Friday Prayers, hinted that Khamenei is guiding the events in Syria, Lebanon, and Gaza, despite Iran publicly saying that it has nothing to do with them. Our news agency reported on Monday. People stand tall because of Khamenei's guidance, and in Syria, where it has resisted against the unbelievers. He said, Meanwhile, the Islamic regime's reporting agency, Abnad.ir, published images of commanders of the Zofagar Battalion fighting in Syria. It said that the Zofagar and Abu Fazl Abbas battalions are mostly made up of Iraqi and Lebanese Shiites in fighting the Syrian rebels. Iran's Quds forces have long trained Shiites to fight along Assad's forces in Syria. Many of these fighters enter Syria through Iraq. Last week, an alleged chemical weapons attack targeted the outskirts of Damascus, which so far has taken lives of the attack later confirmed the U.S. who called Iran. The Obama administration has hinted in recent days that there will be a military response to using chemical weapons. Secretary of State John Kerry called a moral obscenity. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Foreign Policy magazine reported today that U.S. eavesdropping confirmed existence of the chemical attack. Last Wednesday, in the hours after a horrific chemical attack east of the Damascus, an official at the Syrian Ministry of Defense exchanged panicked phone calls with the leader of the chemical weapons unit, demanding answers for a nerve agent strike to kill more than 1,000 people. The magazine reported those conversations were overheard by the U.S. intelligence services. Foreign policy said statement that is the major reason why American officials now say they are certain that the attacks were the work of the Bashar al-Assad regime, and the military is likely to attack that regime in a matter of days. All right, so. We see all the developments surrounding Syria. We can safely say that Syria is the key prophecy because the war to and the ally of America to Syria will bring in a plethora of other countries who are major powers in the world. We can see this that's a mud up here. Um, so while all this is going on, you have all that is happening. It's sort of a perfect, don't want to say a distraction because it's something that is happening. In a, in a way, it is a distraction for the American. But they feel safe. They're at some way far from them. So it's got nothing to do with them, right? That's what you would think. Or we'll keep them focused on on all of this happening, but not what's happening in America. Because behind the scenes, they're, in America, it's very busy. And that's what we want to talk about next. We're going to talk about what's going on in America right now because the burdens of Damascus and the burdens of Babylon. We we did a show uh, probably about three months ago, four months ago, uh, at Super Bowl. 
and we talked about a lot of different things. Um, we talked about in, in primarily the Super Bowl commercial where Satan and, and uh, was looking for the man to sell over for a Mercedes Benz commercial. Talked about this, right? And all of the esoteric and Masonic symbology of this commercial. Well, uh, when all of this was happening and going on, uh, city events are actually unfolding right now in America, and that they have been unfolding for over the past few years. Um, it brought me back to this commercial. There was an advertisement for this commercial, and I actually uploaded the picture to the website for the broadcast. And this particular advertisement says, uh, we guarantee a thrilling fourth quarter. Set your soul on fire. And then the 2013, February 3rd, 2013, it has the third fire. And we talked about the number 13 and what it represents. Number 13 represents rebirth, reincarnation. It represents the going out of the old to the new. When you look at this particular advertisement, you see a stadium, a Mercedes-Benz Superdome stadium, and it appears to be like it's on fire. But when you look real carefully, it has the makeup of a mushroom cloud. Um so on, on the surface, what typically is being said in this advertisement is that the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, they're guaranteed they're guaranteeing to be silent, letting you know that they do control sports because it 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 was a a game where the uh, you know the lights went out, half the lights went out, half life dark in the stadium um, right after the uh, Beyonce. Super Bowl performance and her her uh you know demonic performance that she gave. Um then you had the lights go out. Then you had the San Francisco forty nine ers who were losing the whole game come back and make the fourth quarter come down to the wire. So it was an exciting fourth quarter for those that like football. Also, that is the year or that is the period that this car would be actually made available for those to buy because there are four or four years or fiscal quarters every year. So you have from from the beginning of January to the end of March, that's the first quarter. From the April, the end of June, I'm sorry, the end of let's see, April, May, June, yes, end of June. That's the second quarter. The beginning of July until the end of September, that's the third quarter. The fourth quarter, October 1st, until the end of the year. So you have four fiscal quarters every year, and this is what businesses and corporations base their financial planning on is profits per quarter. Right? So this Mercedes-Benz was to be released October 1st in the fourth quarter during that time period of the year. So on the surface, that is what this advertisement would say to the typical consumer that's looking at this ad. But below the surface, when you look at it from an esoteric sense, it all makes sense now that this is far deeper than a car, that the elite – the Illuminati are guaranteeing an exciting fourth quarter from October 1st to December 31st. They are actually showing you what they're about to unleash. Again, we have the stadium that looks like a mushroom cloud. So now let's talk about just a handful of things that, and events that are going to happen and that are leading to October 1st. So the first article we have going into this is beforeitsnews.com. It is FEMA preparing for the worst in 
in Region 3. Why? The date is August 17, 2013. Now, for, for those that don't know, Turkey is broken up into 10 FEMA regions. FEMA Region 3 is Washington, D.C., Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia. We're going to look at all the things that are to be met by October 1st, and you tell me if they're planning for something big to happen in America, primarily FEMA Region 3. Number one, FEMA purchased orders for over $14.2 million for MREs, which is meal replacements, and heater meals to be delivered to Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchased order for 22 million pouches of emergency water to be delivered to Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchased orders for $13.6 million in MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Austin by October 1st. So Austin is in Texas. That's FEMA Region 6. But the rest here is for Region 3. Nine-week training course for UN peacekeepers in CONUS to learn urban warfare, English, and U.S. weapons systems beginning fourth week of July for 386,000 troops to be completed October 1st. $11 million in antibiotics to be delivered to FEMA Region 3 by October 1st, ordered by the CDC, Center for Disease Control. World Health Organization held second emergency meeting in its history to discuss MERS uh, coron uh, coronavirus, determined a vaccine must be in place by October 1st. 2,800 MREPs must be delivered to DHS by October 1st. These are vehicles. These 2,800 armored vehicles must be delivered to DHS by October 1st. No will be allowed for U.S. military from September 28th through November 5th, NORCOM yearly training for civil unrest suspended until September 27th to be performed in northeast coastal areas. Date for release of QE3 report moved to October 16th. A QE3 report and more later. All DHS agents must qualify with sidearm, shotgun, and AR-15 by September 28. No men of yearly less lethal qualification. Sporadic testing of G GPS and communication satellites is coordinated for the first time with a testing date of September 29th. POTUS mandates to FEMA and DHS concerning support for metropolitan communities dealing with the extreme climate change must be complete by October 1st. These mandates were issued during the last three weeks. Over 300 school systems in the U.S. have determined they need three-day kits for each school and three-day kits for each student to take with them. All deliveries are scheduled for the month of September. All National Guard units will complete riot control and disaster assistance training during this year, annual two-week training. All units must have their training complete by September 30th. Daily testing of the emergency broadcast on September 25th and run through October 2nd. Eastern-based Coast Guard units to perform 
to perform massive group training usually performed in the Gulf in the Virginia and Delaware areas. This is a 10-day training mission to begin September 26th. So just with that rundown, we can definitely see they are very busy and prompt to have all of these measures in place by October 1st for FEMA Region 3. Let's talk about FEMA Region 3 for a moment. FEMA Region 3 is home of the, of the White House, Washington, D.C., the capital of America. We've also talked in past episodes and broadcasts about the movies that have come out. We talked about Olympus Has Fallen, White House Down, and G.I. Joe Retaliation, all which show attacks on the White House by terror groups and the White House being taken over. Is this just another coincidence with everything else that's happening and going on? You know, we should be able to see a clear picture of writing on the wall as far as with what's going on in Syria and these things that are happening behind the scenes in America covertly of what they're preparing for. And this goes all the way back over the past year or two where they've been storing up hollow point rounds, billions of hollow point rounds, and armored vehicles. We talked about that over and over again in past episodes. Um, we've also talked about in past episodes what they're doing in Denver, Colorado with the airport and all underground caverns those type of things that are being built. And even just within the airport itself, when you look at the pictures, murals on the wall, and it shows this, uh, you know, war, famine, sorrow. And we've also talked about how uh, it is a possibility that they plan for Denver, Colorado, to be the new capital of America once uh, Washington, D.C. is taken down. If this happens, but we definitely see a lot of activity going on for this area. You also had this past week about 200 dolphins wash up dead on shore on the shore of Virginia. And remember when the birds and the fish were dying within the past two years, when they just fell out the sky and fish were just dying around the Arkansas area. People were trying to figure out how did this happen, and people were saying harp. Harp was the cause. Harp was causing these fish and these birds to die. Well, could we see harp activity going on in FEMA Region 3 to get ready for whatever it is that they may have planned? You also have coming up the 12th anniversary of September 11, 2013, which is 9-11-13. You have three... Uh, Masonic and occultic numbers for, as far as the numerology is concerned 9, 11, and 13 in perfect sequence back to back to back uh, in order um, we see that you also have uh, another date 9, 9, 13 two days before that so could these possibly for uh, or false flags for the what they need control of America for you know, this, these are just things that we can look at and say it's a possibility. We can't see what's going to happen, but we have to take a look and see what they are planning and what they are doing right at our noses. And um, like I said, what's going on in the Middle East is perfect smokescreen for American people at home for what's being planned there. And there's more. Let's go to the next article. Money.msn.com. All right, so I got dropped off for a minute. And I'm back. Hopefully, you brothers can hear me. Um, let's go to our next article. Money.msn.com. 
Will Obamacare make its October 1st launch date? Um, the schedule for signing up insurance companies has been laid in the latest holdup for the Affordable Care Act. This is dated uh, Wednesday of this week. Is something in the works when it comes to the schedule with the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare? Quoting industry sources, Reuters says the Department of Health and Human Services notified insurance companies Tuesday it would push back its schedule to signal final agreements the new insurance plans from early September to the middle of the month. But HS spokeswoman Joanne Peters said the department is still on track to open the so-called health insurance marketplaces as scheduled on October 1st. While the reason for the delay isn't known, source told Reuters has been attributed to some technology problems regarding the of insurance products on the federal online system. So Obamacare is still scheduled and on track to open and launch on October 1st. We talked about Obamacare in the past. The fact that it, in the Obamacare it talks about a class two and class three radio frequency device that can be embedded in skin, and we have said that this has all the markings for the mark of the beast, Obamacare. All right, so everything we ref we talked about with FEMA so far, Region three. People, people maybe fell asleep on Obamacare. It's creeping up fast. So definitely so far, does it look like an, a thrilling fourth quarter? Absolutely. There's more. Remember we read and before it's news that the uh, date for the release of QE3 report moved to October 16th? PressTV.ir. U.S. to hit debt limit in mid-October, Lou says. This was dated uh, August 27, 2013. The U.S. Treasury Department has warned that the U.S. government could run out of money to pay its bills by mid-October, causing the nation major problems. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew on Monday urged lawmakers in Congress to move swiftly to raise the country's $16.7 trillion debt limit well before any risk of default becomes imminent. Lew said the government will exhaust its borrowing capacity in the middle of October and be left with about $50 billion in cash on hand, an amount that he said could conceivably be wiped out in a single day. Such a scenario could undermine financial markets and result in significant disruptions to our economy, Lou said. The U.S. government has about $16.7 trillion in debt, $16.7 trillion in debt, which continues to rise because the government spends more money than it brings in. More money like the wars in the Middle East, which are costing trillions of dollars. The government spends more than $3.5 trillion a year on a variety of things, including Social Security benefits, road projects, the military, foreign aid. Meanwhile, U.S. President Barack Obama says he will not negotiate with Congress over the matter. He said that if the debt ceiling is not raised, there will be delays in payments, including benefits, and government employees' salaries, and a default on government debt. A 2011 Standard & Poor's downgraded the U.S. credit rating after President Obama and Congress failed to resolve the long-term debt crisis. 
In March, Obama signed an order to implement $85 billion in budget cuts as part of the sequestration, uh, sequestration cuts. The cuts are part of a $1 trillion in spending cuts over the next decade. A Gallup survey in August showed that 53% of Americans mentioned economic issues like unemployment and the deficit as the most important problems facing the country. So here we are on the brink of another war in Syria and the economy and the uh, the debt limit is scheduled to hit the limit in mid-October, another event for the fourth quarter. And this, we just talked about the mark of the beast with Obamacare, and this debt limit is right on time for the economy to crash. Not saying it will happen at this time, but we know that the mark of the beast will be tied to spending, so the economy at one point will crash to bring forward that no man may buy or sell, lest he that hath the mark. Again, all of this is happening under the table while everybody's watching Syria. Or maybe people aren't watching Syria. Maybe they're watching Miley Cyrus and, you know, uh, checking out the VMAs and, and getting ready for Labor Day and football. Re regardless of the smoke screen, these are happening in America, and the American people, majority, are not aware of any of them. The days of Noah. Let's go to the next fourth quarter event. This comes off of NewYorkTimes.com. As worries over the power grid rise, drill will simulate a knockout blow. August 16, 2013. The electric grid, as government and private experts describe it, is the glass jaw of American industry. If an adversary lands a knockout blow, they fear it could black out vast areas of the continent for weeks, interrupt supplies of water, gasoline, diesel fuel, and fresh food, shut down communications, and create disruptions of a scale that was only hinted at by Hurricane Sandy and the attacks of September the 11th. I also would like to throw in the blackout that happened in that area. It was, what, like 2007 or 2008? I can't remember the year, but there was a blackout, uh, electrical grid blackout also. This is why thousands of utility workers, business executives, National Guard officers, FBI anti-terrorism experts, and officials from government agencies in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico are preparing for an emergency drill in November that will simulate physical attacks and cyber attacks that could take down large sections of the power grid. Here we have another drill. Remember, with all the false flag events that have happened, there's always been a drill that was happening at the time of those false flags. I'm not saying something is going to happen during the drill, but again, this is another event happening in the fourth quarter. They will practice for a crisis unlike anything the real grid has ever seen and more than 150 companies and organizations have signed up to participate. This is different from a hurricane that hits X, Y, and Z counties in the southeast, and they have a loss of power for three or four days, said the official in charge of the drill, Brian M. Harrell of the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, known as NERC. We really want to go beyond that. One goal of the drill, called GridX2, is to explore how governments would react as the law of the grid crippled the supply chain for everyday necessities. If we fail at electricity, we're going to fail miserably. Kurt Hebert, a former chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, said at a recent conference held by the Bipartisan Policy Center, 
Mr. Harrell said that previous exercises were based on the expectation electricity would be up and running relatively quick after an attack. So here they are telling you in their mind predictive programming at its finest that a possible terrorist attack could happen to the grid, so we had to prepare for it. A cyber attack or a physical attack. Now, he said, the goal is to educate the federal government on what their expectations should or shouldn't be. The industry held a smaller exercise two years ago in which 75 utilities, companies, and agencies participated, but this one will be vastly expanded and will be carried out in a more just mood. Most of the participants will join the exercise from their workplaces, with NERC in Washington announcing successive failures. One example organizers say is a submission break-in that officials initially think is an attempt to steal copper, but instead the intruder uses a USB drive to upload a virus into a computer network. The drill is part of a give and take in the past few years between the government and utilities that have exposed the difficulties of securing the electric system. The credit is essential for most everything, but it is mostly controlled by investor-owned companies or municipal or regional agencies. 99% of military facilities rely on commercial power, according to the White House. The utilities play down abilities in comparison with the government's. They have the intelligence operation, the standing army, the three-letter agencies. Scott Aronson, Senior Director of National Security Policy at the Edison Electric Institute, the Trade Association of Investor-Owned Utilities. We have the grid operations XTs. The expertise involves running 1,500 major power plants and 450,000 miles of high-voltage transmission lines monitored and controlled by a staggering mix of devices installed over decades. Some utilities use their own antique computer protocols and are probably safe from hacking, what the industry calls security through obscurity. But others rely on Windows-based control systems that are common to many industries. Some of them run on in-house networks, but security but computer security experts say they are not confident that all the connections to the public Internet have been discovered and secured. Many may be vulnerable to support known about malware that can disable the systems or destroy their ability to communicate, leaving their human operators blind about the positions of switches, the flows of current, and other critical parameters. Experts say a sophisticated hacker could also damage hard replace equipment. In an effort to draw utilities and the government closer, the industry recently established the Electric Subsector Coordinating Council, made up of high-level executives, to meet with federal officials. The first session is next month. All right, I'm going to go to the next page. All right. Preparation for the November drill comes as Congress is debating laws that could impose new standards to protect the grid from cyber attacks. But many in the industry, some of whom would like such rules, doubt that they can pass. The drill is also being planned as conferences, studies, and even works of fiction are raising near apocalyptic visions of catastrophe, catastrophes involving the grid. A National Academy of Science reports last year that terrorists could, could cause broad hardship for months with physical attacks on hard-to-replace co components. An emerging effort led in part by R. James Woolsey, a former director of the Central Intelligence Agency, is gearing up to pressure state legis legislatures to force utilities to protect equipment against an electromagnetic pulse which could come from solar activity or be caused by small nuclear weapons exploded at low altitude, frying crucial components. 
An attack using electromagnetic pulse is laid out in extensive detail in the novel One Second After, published in 2009 and endorsed by Newt Gingrich. In another novel, Gridlock, published this summer and co-written by Byron L. Dorgan, the former senator from Dakota, a rogue Russian agent working for Venezuela and Iran, helps hackers threaten the grid. In the preface, Mr. Dorgan says such an attack could cause 10,000 times as much devastation as the terrorist strikes on September 11, 2001. So again, we have more predictive programming with these books that actually show this happening. Despite the growing anxiety, the government and the private sector have had trouble coordinating their grid protection efforts. The utility industry argues that the government has extensive protection on threats but keeps it classified. Government officials concede the problem, and they have suggested that some utility executives get security clearances. But with hundreds of utilities and thousands of executives, it cannot issue such clearances fast enough. And the industry would likely would like to be instantly warned when the government identifies Internet servers that are known to be sources of malware. Another problem is that the electric system is so tightly integrated that it collapses in one spot, whether by error or intent, can set off a cascade, as happened in August 2003, when a power failure took a few moments to spread from Detroit to New York. So that was in 2003 when that happened. And it's like a domino effect. Once it happens in one area, it just, it's like dominoes and it spreads across the whole region. Sometimes utility engineers and law enforcement officials also seem to speak different languages. In his book, Protecting Industrial Control Systems from Electronic Threats, Joseph Weiss, an engineer and cybersecurity expert, recounted a meeting between electrical engineers and the FBI in 2008 when an FBI official spoke at length about IEDs. He was referring to improvised explosive devices, but to the engineers, the abbreviation meant intelligent electronic devices. And experts fear government-sponsored hacking. Michael V. Hayden, another former CIA director speaking at the Bipartisan Policy Center conference, said that the Stuxnet virus, which disabled some of Iran's centrifuges for enriching uranium, might invite retaliation. In a time of peace, someone just used a cyber weapon to destroy another nation's critical infrastructure. He said, ouch. All right, so they are looking at all the protocols and possibilities and ins and outs of the electrical grid and the uh, idea of an attack terrorist, whether it be cyber or physical, and using this as a pretext that they need to run a drill in case something like this happens. They know how to act, you know, in, in a uh, prompt response. All right, another fourth quarter event. Now, this ties in with the next article, RT.com. Departing DHS secretary warns of serious cyber threat, devastating natural disaster. August 28, 2013. So what you have is you have Janet Napolitani, uh, Napolitano, Ben Bernanke, you have all of these top people in politics that are stepping out of their positions leading into the fourth quarter. Also in other organizations like the NBA, you have David Stern, who stepped out not going into the 2014 season for the NBA. So you have a lot of key people stepping out of their positions that they've been in for a long time going into the fourth quarter. Of this year. The Department U.S. Homeland Security Secretary used her farewell speech to warn the nation's leaders of an impending serious cyber attack as well as a natural disaster 
the impact of which will dwarf Hurricane Sandy and other disasters in recent memory. So how does she know that this is going to happen? How can she be so certain that this is going to happen? I mean, how do you predict natural disaster? Janet Napolitano, after four years at the helm of Department of Homeland Security, delivered her final speech Tuesday morning before she formally exits her position next week. Many things still need tending, and my successor will most certainly have a full plate on his or her hands, she said, adding that she faced many challenges over the past four years, including Hurricane Sandy in 2012 and the Deepwater Horizon oil spill two years before that. Napolitano, whose Department of Homeland Security was created in the wake of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks and is primarily responsible for immigration and airport security, said the agency launched a historic effort after the attempted underwear bombing in 2009. The Transportation Security Administration helped coordinate screening efforts against non-metallic devices in 190 countries, she said. Now, mind you, this is the same DHS that has been stockpiling hollow-tip hollow round bullets by the billions for the past couple of years. So I would say that they definitely know something's coming, something's about to happen. The lesson is clear. For every attack we experience, every threat we get, and every piece of intelligence we come across, we learn. She continued, and we get stronger and more nimble. On Christmas Day 2009, a bomber managed to board a plane from, the, from Amsterdam to Detroit, Michigan, and armed with an explosive. The Politano did not mention how the bomber was able to subvert security or her much maligned comment at the time asserting that the system worked. From that attempted attack, we learned that relevant information possessed by U.S. Customs and Border Protection needed to be available overseas. At the point of departure for this, U.S., we fixed that, she said. We learned that after to non-metallic devices, we have training technology and tactics to counter that. Napolitano, the former governor of Arizona, was really interested in replacing U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, but as she has shown no signs of leaving the office, she announced she would become the next president of the University of California system. Civil libertarians have frequently criticized Napolitano for what they perceive an invasive, as invasive TSA practices. The agency, which was by the Department of Homeland Security, has expanded over the past decade despite frequent allegations of misconduct and failed inspections. The outgoing DHS chief also had harsh words for her detractors in Congress. Despite the annual deportations being at, the, at their highest number in decades, congressional Republicans have criticized the Obama administration for failing to crack, crack down on immigration Napolitano has championed the DREAM Act, meant to ease the path to citizenship for immigrants. Congress has had a chance to give these so-called DREAMers a way to stay in our country through the DREAM Act, but unfortunately, that legislation fed garner the 60 votes needed for closure, falling just five votes short, despite strong bipartisan support, she said. All right. Napolitano went on to offer an open letter of advice to her success. You will also have to prepare for the increasing likelihood of more weather-related events of a more severe nature as well as climate change and continue to build the capacity to respond to disasters in dark regions of the country at the time. She said, you will also need a large Again, my question is, how is she so certain and, and um, convinced 
that a serious threat and devastating natural is come to America unless she's a part of the power that actually works in Louisiana that's constantly getting bigger and bigger. Uh, the new line in the Midwest that people have have been a long time now saying something to happen there that's going to be catastrophic. You have the Yellowstone uh, geysers there that they said that if those went off, exploded uh, in volcano, a uh, volcanic fashion, that two thirds of America could be in ash. The San Andreas Fault in California. You have nuclear power plants all along fault lines in America. Speaking of nuclear power, you have Fukushima even has popped back up in, the, in, in recent weeks since all of this other stuff has, has came out in the news. There's the whole coast and further into America through the uh, you know meltdown of, of that facility, um, which they've already admitted that the whole is pretty much ruined from all of the uh, you know radiation that they're pumped to the water of the ocean. So there's a plethora of things that could happen naturally to America. And don't forget, I'll throw in terrorism, a cyber terrorist strike, the power grid, um, or any any other type of financial institution and cause a, a stock market crash. In, any of these things they like to throw in so that you feel that, you know, need to be safe. TSA at the airport, which is part of DHS, to grope you down and say that, hey, this is in the, this is all about protection. Make sure that terrorism doesn't happen within the airlines. Give up your rights so that you can feel more secure. All right, so this uh, just happened between she gave this speech. Mind you, all of this is the day before the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, which was August 29th. So all of these things happening right around the same time, there's a lot of activity happening for this time of the year. All right, now this leads to our last article. And after we go to the article, we're going to take When we come back, we're going to do a segment to be the big breakdown of everything so far with Syria and America, the burdens of Damascus and Babylon. And this comes off sportsnews.com. It says, Americans will not experience Syrian war in comfort of homes. NSNBC alerts, Wednesday, August 28, 2013. Americans are unprepared for the strong likelihood of a pending regional war, global economic collapse in World War III. According to an exclusive interview with political analyst and SNBC's editor in chief, who shed new insights from insiders on the presently pending attack on Syria. If any U.S. citizen believes he can experience a serial war from the comfort of his home, they are terribly mistaken, stated NSNBC's Dr. Chris in a Skype interview with Deb Pree. People need to understand that. And the media are silent, he said about up in chaos at home. The decision to attack Syria within hours, Israeli media report, noting that it will be out in a limited scope by Western, regional, and Arab countries. Israel Channel's 10 television station reported by way of its Washington correspondent that U.S. President Barack Obama will decide on a military strike against Syria very soon, if not within a few hours. An attack will most likely be launched over the weekend, not least because, as far as I know, it is a public holiday in the USA where people drink and could not care less, said Lehman in his European base. 
But what I stated there at the beginning, it's a perfect time the weekend to make this this strike happen. Just as uh, Layman stated here in his interview with NBC, Obama signed the national nationally host NDAA 2012 on New Year's Eve as Americans partied, making the nation officially under military dictatorship, martial law, a police state, according to Layman. The next phrase of the Obama regime's human rights abuses is likely to bring even more suffering. All right, going down here, uh, regional war, global collapse, World War III. Behind it are Israel, USA, United Kingdom, and France, because promised that the USA and UK would help France to keep Germany off its back, because Germany demanded a change in the of France. In other words, we are heading for, number one, a regional war that may well get into Europe, number two, a global economic collapse and a permanent backwardation of the gold market, and then, number three, World War III, according to Lehman. The reality is a Sarajevo-like situation where the events begin controlling the decisions of the policymakers. Layman capitalized in the Skype interview. How confident is he in his analysis on upcoming events? 75%, 65 conservatively, he responded. He is far from the only one who assesses a situation like this. Meanwhile, Americans think they are safe. Oh, hum, another war. Exactly. Lindman responded, adding, but this one will bite. The hardest bite will be when the gold market goes in a permanent backwardation, according to Lehman. China already said it is not one, a currency war, but it is prepared for it. All right. So, um, so I'm, I'm still here. I'm getting some reports that, uh, that I'm not able to be heard. So give me one moment and confirm. Um, so, you know, uh, at this point, um, you know, the writing is all on the wall um, as far as um, – As all of these events are coming together, uh, one moment here.
All right, so um, got the blog talk back up. Hopefully, I can be heard now. Let me confirm if I can be heard. Um, one moment. Um, seems like Blog Talk's website is doing some crazy stuff right now. One moment. Do you have a talent? A company? Or a service to render? Would you like an avenue to get the word out? Well, GOCC Blog Talk Radio would like to connect with you to help fulfill your vision. Don't have a clear direction on where to go? It's okay. GOCC Blog Talk Radio can assist you with making your very own commercial. Call us now at 1-888-334-3330 and be on your way to the expansion of your business. That's 1-888-334-3330. GOCC Blog Talk Radio Station, starting the foundations for the building blocks of life. GOCC members ask for special rates. Okay, um, I'm trying to uh, get back in to be heard. I don't know if anybody can hear me. Um, hopefully, uh, you can hear me now. Um, all right, good. Sorry, sorry about the uh, issues here, but it looks like Blog Talk is definitely, uh, you know, doing their normal routine of um, whatever it is they do to make things difficult for us, but. Uh, we're going to go forward. So uh, we ended segment one, just going into the news of the events and everything that's happening in Syria and also the things that are going on under the radar in America. All right. Um, that people aren't maybe aware of these things that are being planned behind the scenes to build up for the uh, abomination of desolation. It happens against the children of Israel time and time again. Uh, we're going into the height of Jacob's trouble. And we must understand what these things mean biblically and spiritually so we can prepare ourselves, have the knowledge, uh, and be a- a- awakened during this time of trouble. I know in, the, in the, maybe at the end of July, beginning of August, you know, it was a point that was brought out that once I seen Congress taking a vacation for five weeks, I was thinking to myself, this would be a perfect time for something to happen where Obama could, could, you know, launch a war and get away with it because in order to go to war, president must congressional approval. But if Congress is on vacation, there's nobody that he has to seek or go through there in Congress. Then a few days later, you had the Mideast uh, U.S. embassy closings across like 22 uh, countries or 22 different embassies across the Middle East, which was more confirmation. Okay, they're, they're putting this, this fake terrorist threat out there to, to pump fear and propaganda. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to address everything we've gone and talked about so far going into the Bible and talking about the burden of Damascus and the burden of Babylon. Uh, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 17, and we're going to start at verse 1. Isaiah 17 and 1 says, The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Now, how we know that this is Bible prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled yet, because Damascus is one of the world's longest continuous cities in the world um, about 4,000 years roughly it's, it's been a running continuous city so this Damascus being made desolate hasn't happened yet or being made into a ruinous heap and being taken away from a city but when you look at the pictures of Damascus today you're seeing a a similarity to this destruction and desolation that we're reading of here at uh, Isaiah 17 and 1. 
we, we read the article about the 100 missile blew within 48 hours that America plans on sending out through warships and submarines. That would most definitely make Damascus into a ruinous heap. So this prophecy, one way or another, will be fulfilled. Uh, we can't stop it, but what we can do is we can expose the evils within our government to our people and show them that the government is wicked. American government is lying. They're using this, and you need to you know, use this as an opportunity to uh, awake our people uh, and show them Bible prophecy. That's the whole purpose of bringing out the fact that these are all lies uh, perpetrated by the American government and media. But there's a uh, there's a uh, um, a divine order to all of this with the Most High, His will being done. Let's now go to the Book of Jeremiah, because when it talks about a burden, a burden, uh, that word there in the Greek Strong's Hebrews forty eight fifty three is must must draw which means tribute, utterance, doom, singing, desire, prophecy, right? So it's a prophecy or a doom of Damascus. Now we're going to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49. We're going to drop down to concerning Damascus. They are faint hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. The mask is waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee. And fear hath seized on her. Anguish hath taken her at the woman in travail. This is what's going on right now. This is what's going to lead up to verse 25. How is the city of praise not? the city of my joy. Because remember, at one point, Damascus was a haven of a Christian. In the New Testament times, you had Paul on his road to Damascus. So you have a lot of things set up for disciples and apostles for Damascus. Verse 26. Therefore, the young men shall fall in their streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, say as the Most High of hosts, all of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Hadad. All right, so what we see here, a glimpse into Damascus becoming a ruin to see, and the distance these provinces must be filled. So we have an understanding of what's, what's happening, what's, what's going to happen before it happens, and we can. when you're reading prophecy that it's not in chronological order all the time. It does jump around in some aspects. All right. All right, so um let's go to second Ezra chapter fifteen and we're gonna start at verse fourteen. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and the destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another. And swore from their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. And invading one another 
they shall not regard their kings nor princes in the court and in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. So this is the whole reason that they're set up the things like martial law, different creeds to seize things up because they know once once the once it hits the fan, people are going to look to make moves as the scripture says, be as a be a pilgrim in, the earth in those days when you see these evils. So their thing is to keep people from traveling. So a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. <clears throat> For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. So you're going to have trouble and cease. Houses be destroyed, men shall be afraid. Verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. In great tribulation, so you have people that you know that have stocked up and, and prepared, and think that they're going to be able to, you know, hold out on all, everything that's going on and, and hold up in their homes. But the scripture says that a, a neighbor is not going to have uh, a, a man isn't going to have pity on his neighbor. He's going to destroy the house with the sword. He's going to run up into somebody's house with guns. You're going to have people going from house to house. And spoil their goods, and the reason because of this is because of emigration. Once all chaos and hell breaks loose on the streets, and these things start happening, then the supply chain breaks down. Supermarkets no longer can uh, keep the keep the shelves stocked because people are panicking, running to the grocery stores trying to get food. You know, the, the grocery store only keeps about three days' worth of food, and th those trucks are not constantly keeping those grocery sto store shelves full. Then there's, there's not going to be any food there for people to get, food or water. And they have stocked up and stored up for this time. Their neighbors are going to be running into their houses. 20. Behold, say at the most high. I will, get all, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. From the ring of the sun, from the, from the island, turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Like as they do, yet this is the chosen. So, so I also in in the best state of power. So all of these nations that have conspired over all the centuries and millennia and they've, and they've done the evils that they've done to us, the Most High says he's going to repent them in their bosoms. He's going to repay all of these nations for the e evils that they've done to the children of Israel and to Jacob. Verse 22. My right hand should not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So this particular scripture is for Christians who are out saying that the law is done away with and that God loves the sinner. Well, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says right here, the Most High says that his right hand shall not spare the sinners. So for Christians that are not keeping the law, saying the law is done away with, that we don't have to keep the command, you are in danger. Because the most high is coming for those people that, with that mentality that, that are living this lifestyle of sin. Also, them that said, shed innocent blood upon the earth. So think just because of all these innocent people dying, that they're not going to be recompensed. Because the most high said, over this blood upon the earth. Verse 23. The fire has gone forth from his wrath and has consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. So the Most High's wrath is going to go out. 
consume the foundations of the earth and the sinners. So again, we see the sinners here being consumed with fire. Verse 24, woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments. So if you're living in a lifestyle of sin, saying the law's done away with, we don't got to keep the laws, this scripture is particularly for you. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments. And this isn't us telling you this. Say it the most high. Verse 25, I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. So sinners are not going to be spared. And they're waiting on a rapture. The rapture they're waiting on is not the type of rapture that they've been lied to that's going to happen. Verse 26, for the most high know all them that sin against him and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction so you may think that you're getting away with sin because it hasn't nothing happened to you yet because we're under grace but the most high knows he knows your sins even when you think they're not sinning you try to look over it like it ain't nothing it's no bill Right? The Most High is going to deliver sinners unto death and destruction. Verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you, because you have sinned against him. So if, you're, if people ask all the time, how, how do we make it through this? It's coming. Don't be a sinner because he's not going to deliver sinners. And these plagues that come upon the earth are going to hit the sinners. All right, that's crystal clear. Now, going into Damascus in Assyria, verse 28. Behold, a horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east. So Ezra is looking looking to the east and seeing something that's, that's horrible where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth that all they which hear them may fear and tremble also the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood and with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. So that's what we're seeing right now. You're seeing these, these rebels going in from other countries joining in battle like wild boars. The scripture says raging in wrath will go forth as wild boars and will waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand. So now that all of these rebels have caused this strife in Syria, this civil war, now the dragons, those who are under Satan, like the American government and all of the allies, the uh, nations of the dragons of Arabia, chumped together, having the upper hand, remembering their nature, that they shall turn themselves firing together in great power to persecute them. So what you're seeing going on between the American government, the European governments, the Arab governments, the media, is great conspiring, conspiring together in great power to persecute them. Verse 32. Then these shall trouble bled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. All right, so we've already seen people fleeing out of Syria, and you're going to see more people fleeing out of that country. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them. This is the burden of Damascus. This is the uh, America and all the allies coming against the Assyrians. 
and besieging them and consumed some of them. And its host, host shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings. So you have problems within the Syrian government, within their politicians, because of fear and dread. Because all of this stuff is to happen. And what do you do? All right? So it's, it's going to happen. We, You know, one way or another, it's going to happen. Verse 34. Behold, clouds from the east and from the north unto the south. And they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. So we've seen some of these clouds already in Syria with these what look to be tactical nukes with these big mushroom clouds that go up in big balls of fire into the sky where Israel was said to have launched those those missiles into Syria. They had one at night time and they had one during the day. This is the vision that Ezra is seeing. <clears throat> this blitz that this blitz that America is talking about doing on Syria here within a matter of however, however long, within the next few days. Tomorrow, maybe, these are those clouds full of wrath and storm, horrible to look upon. Verse 35, he shall smite one upon another, and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth, even their own star, and blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. So when Edris is looking at this vision, he's looking at these missiles coming out the sky, and he's comparing them to as fallen angels or stars falling out the sky like fireballs. And when you see in a movie and you see they show these aliens or their ships or, you know, Superman coming out the sky like a ball of fire, that's a fallen angel or a star. So this is what Edris is looking at these missiles as like stars. Smiting down a great multitude upon the earth, and blood shall from the sword unto the belly, a dung of men unto the camel's huff. Verse 37 And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon earth. And when this happens, it's happening now, the war will be really starts to get kicked off, it's going to be fearfulness and trembling upon earth. People are going to see this, and they're going to know what time it is. <clears throat> and they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. So when you when you watch these tactical nukes going up in Syria, hear these Arabs in the background or uh, Syrians yelling out, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, which means like, oh, my God. It says, they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. Verse 38. And then shall there come great storm from the south and from the north, and another part from the west. So there's going to be missiles coming from everywhere going into Syria. America has warships in the Mediterranean. It's got... This is in Iraq. It's got Turkey as an ally. It's got Jordan as an ally. So Syria is surrounded. It's got Israel as an ally. You're going to see missiles coming from south, north, and the west. Verse 39. And strong wind shall arise from the east and shall open it. And the cloud which he raised up in wrath, and the stars stirred to cause fear toward the east and west wind, shall be destroyed. The great and mighty cloud shall be puffed up full of wrath, and the star that they may make all the earth afraid, and them that dwell therein, and they shall pour out over every high and eminent place a horrible star. So this is how Damascus will be made a ruinous heap, the burden of Damascus. And when you look at this horrible star, you can think of this possibly being a nuclear explosion, a horrible star. 
verse 41, fire and hail and flying swords and many waters that all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. Verse 42, and they shall break down the cities and walls, mountains and hills, trees of wood and grass of the meadows and their corn. All right, so this is all the destruction and uh, the meat of what we were reading of Isaiah 17 and 1 and what's going to happen to Damascus and portions of Syria. Verse 43, and they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon and make her afraid. So now after all of this has happened to Syria, eventually the war is going to shift over to America. Why is this war going to shift over to America? You see how America now is pretty much being isolated as the only country looking to strike Syria or the main country. All the other European countries are kind of dropping out. Iran says it will launch back at America. Syria said it will launch back. Russia said it will launch back. So this is a a pre-planned destiny of America. And we talked about in past broadcasts four or five months ago, we did a series on the New Atlantis with the original founders of Sir, like Sir Francis Bacon who wrote the book with Atlantis. And this was the Rosicrucians' plan from the very beginning was to, to, to found America, to build it up as this great empire, only to destroy it. And the reason why Obama now is being put in the seat as being impeached or being tried for war crimes because he's gung-ho for going to war against Syria, regardless of what the evidence says or what countries won't stand with him. This is all a plan because Obama's going to be okay, but the vengeance is now going to turn toward the American people because when this war comes back to America, the American government will already be waging, waging war on the people. Now here come the other countries to say, you know what, America has been the one behind all these wars for all these years. America is the world's problem. We need to take her down. All right, and they'll go steadfastly unto Babylon and make her afraid. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star in wrath shall pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven, and all they that be about her shall bewail her. So let's talk about all, what countries are going to come against America and then who are these that the they that shall be around her that's bewailing her, her destruction. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 13 now. Isaiah 13, verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amaz did see. Lift up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the most high of hosts mustered the host of the battle. So these are all of those nations that have gathered together to come against America that we just read of in Second Edges 15 that shall besiege her. Verse 5, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Most High, in the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. So they've come from all over the earth to destroy all of America. 
Verse 6, How ye, for the day of the Most High is at hand, it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. So this is part of the day of the Lord, which leads up to the, the day of Christ's return. All that is is precursor and leading up to Christ coming back must happen before he returns. Verse 7, all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. We just read that in uh, Second Ezra 15. And they shall be afraid. Paying sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Most High cometh, cruel with wrath and fear and anger. Make the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sins thereof out of it. Same thing we read in Second Ezra 15. The sinners are about to be destroyed. Christians are that are not keeping the law are in trouble. Verse 10, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. All right, so that's jumping forward into the future. When Christ comes back, everything's going to go dark. And Christ will be the only light that you see in the sky when he comes back with his angels. All right, so that jumps forward. But then it's, it's going to jump back into the judgment on America. Verse 11, And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So all the people that are proud, arrogant, that are living a sinful lifestyle, is coming to an end. The Most High is about to bring them down low. Verse 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So it's going to be a shortage of men. And it's going to be very rare to be around men. It's about to be women, and that's about it, because children will be killed too. So it will be a lot of women. Very few men, very few children. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth, shall remove her place in the wrath of the Most High of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as a chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall turn every man to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. So there is that flee. And come up out of the land of the north Ho ho Come forth and flee From the land of the north All the other nations That came to America from other countries Are about to go back They will flee out of that place And start to head back to where they come from And those that don't leave It says verse 15 Everyone that is found Shall be thrust through And everyone that is joined unto them Shall fall by the sword so if you stand with America when this happens and you take the mark of the beast and you want to believe America or country is what's coming, you're going to fall by the sword. Verse 16, the children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Those your children. Their houses shall be spoiled. There's the houses. The neighbors run into the houses with the sword, spoiling the houses, and their wives ravished or raped. Because if there's no man in the house, men are rare. Who, who's to protect the women? So who is this coming against America? Let's talk to some of these countries. Behold, will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and it's for gold, they shall not delight in it. So now you have the Medes, the Persians, or Iran, which have said that if you attack Syria, 
we're going to destroy Israel, and we're coming for America next. Just heard right now. And gold or silver that you offer them is going to stop them from doing what they're going to do. <clears throat> All right, now let's get some let's get some more precepts. Let's hold uh, Isaiah 13, and we'll come back. And let's go to Jeremiah chapter 50. Because it's not just going to be Iran, but all these other countries are going to join in league and get their chance of opportunity to destroy America. But Iran will be leading leading the way. Uh, actually, Jeremiah 15 and 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Most High have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. The, the Medes are stirred up. He's raised up their spirit. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Most High, the vengeance of his temple. Verse 28. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes. So prepare all the nations that are going to join with Iran, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of this dominion. And to show that this is not ancient Babylon, during ancient Babylon, it was Darius the king, King of Persia that took down Babylon did not have all the nations joining with him to take down ancient Babylon. It was just the Persian Empire. But this is talking about a plethora of nations that are going to join with Iran to destroy America. Um and we're going to get the precept to that. Jeremiah chapter fifty. Verse 9, for lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon <clears throat> an assembly of great nations, <clears throat> excuse me, an assembly of great nations from the north country. So you have an, an assembly of great nations. Let's get the definition for assembly. Strong's Hebrews 6951. A congregation, multitude, company. All right. With the Medes. Not just Iran. We're going to get specifics here on what other countries are going to join with Iran. And they shall set themselves in array against her from thence and shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Let's get these up. Go to uh, uh, Revelations chapter 17. Revelation 17, about Mystery Babylon, which is America. All right. Start at verse 12. Revelation 17, verse 12, it says, And the ten horns, horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These ten horns represent the European Union. When you go into the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7, and it talks about the ten horns, you notice all the, the ten European, original ten European countries that came out of the Roman Empire. All right, so when, when America goes down, the European Union will be, will receive this power back from America that gave to America. When they came to America, they'll receive it back, which is what they want, to destroy America, get the power back, and they will fight against Christ when he comes, when he returns to the earth. 
These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. The lamb is Christ. So these ten horns are going to make war with Christ when he comes back. America's gone. And the lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, which the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. America is made up of every nationality that you can think of. It's a country of immigrants. This is the whore. America is the whore that sitteth on many waters. And the ten horns, verse 10, and the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So the European Union will also join with Iran to destroy America. Italy has already said they're against the strikes in Syria. The United Kingdom has dropped out and said they don't want anything with America striking Syria. So one by one, you've already seen the United, the uh, European Union, the European countries dropping out and saying, America, you're on your own. Because all of this is going to fall back on America. All right, brothers and sisters. Um, uh, got a message from Blog Talk that they're having problems with their website. I don't know if it's because of the holiday or uh, all the madness that's going on, but uh, we're going to pick back up where we left off. So we just read about the ten horns hating the whore, making her desolate and naked eating her flesh and burning her with fire. Um, you know, about two, about a minute and 30 seconds before we go to overtime. So if you're listening through the computer, you want to go into the last hour. We're going to take calls, questions, comments. The guest calling up 240. Just press 1, and that will put you in the, uh, the guest queue, and we'll take your car after this uh Finishing up with these last few precepts here. All right, so Iran is going to lead the way, and Europe and the European Union will gather around to destroy America. All these countries that are now going through war crimes of America, all of these wars, and, and starting World War III. It's all going to fall back America. It's going to fall back on the American people. It's not going to fall back on the government. The government's going to be gone. They want, they got privacy. They got dual citizenship on the passports. They'll be gone. But this is going to fall back on the American people. All right? Obama will go down as the scapegoat and as the man who started World War III. So go down in infamy for that. And American people will be the ones to suffer. You have white people saying that he was a black man that caused our country to fall. Not their country. It was stolen by their ancestors. All right, you're going to have black people standing up. You can't talk about my president like that. Right? So here's your race war. Now you have nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. This is all the stuff Christ is referring to. All right. Now, Second Ezra chapter fifteen. In verse uh one moment here. Forty four when it talks about them coming under Babylon, besieging her, star of wrath pouring out on her, 
the dust of smoke going up into heaven, and no doubt her shall be wet. So who is this then that's going to bewail her? Let's go to Revelation 18. Eighteen verse nine, and the king of the earth made fornication, and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off. Notice how America sits right, isolated, like with the Pacific Ocean on one side, the Atlantic Coast on the other. So they're going to be standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, you don't want any parts of the destruction she's getting, saying, the lie, the lie, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. It's going to happen quick. And that's what they're preparing for with all of these FEMA improvisions and FEMA Region 3, these hollow point rounds, everything that you see going on under the radar in America that they're not talking about. While all, all, everything's happening in the Middle East, they're preparing. they got FEMA conference, FEMA camps, you name it, all set up for when this happens. And the blame goes on America, the economy collapsed, all of that. It's all set up. It's all been pre-planned. Obama will be in the sunset laughing on his way out and it's going up in flames. Him and his elite buddies, for they've accomplished what their forefathers Francis Bacon going all the way back to Plato and Socrates, all the way back to the fallen angels and the Nephilim in the time of the first Atlantis. This plan of building up this Babylon, this new Atlantis in America, and the power going back in the ten horns. Let's talk about everything that's going to happen to America before the destruction. Revelations 18 and 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. So all of that stuff's going to happen. When the stuff hits the fan, and it it's going on in the Middle East with this war with Syria, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit America in the economy. Gas prices rising. People losing their minds. Right? False flag events, terrorist attacks, natural disasters. Let's talk about those natural disasters. But Janet Napolitano warned it's coming. She already said it's coming. Revelation 16, verse 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. So this is the greatest earthquake of all time. Verse 19, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before the Most High to give unto her the the, the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So this earthquake is going to hit America, and it's going to split it in three pieces, and that's the future naval map that the Navy has already predicted that America is going to be in three pieces. When you look at the map, you got the New Madrid fault line. you got the sinkhole in Louisiana. you got the Yellowstone geyser. you got the San Andreas fault. you got all these things set up in America for a perfect split of three pieces. you got the plague. So you got the nuclear reactors all over America. So many nuclear reactors. You got Fukushima coming over from the from from Japan hitting America. All of these things happening. And that's before the missiles come from the other nations. Verse twenty. And every land away and the mountains were not found. Verse 21, and there fell upon men a grill out of heaven. So now here come the missiles. After America split in three pieces, now here comes the missiles, the great hail out of heaven. Every stone about the weight of a talent. 
and men blaspheme the Most High because of the plague of the hell. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. So Christians waiting on the rapture, Israelites talking about spaceships, these are people blaspheming the Most High. How come you forsake this? How come you didn't rapture us up and bring spaceships? It's because the Most High said, come out of her, my people. But you see these evils be a pilgrim upon the face of the earth. All right, so brothers and sisters that understand and know this, when things get bad, there is no more money because the money won't collapse. There's no more excuse for I don't have the money to leave. The mark of the beast will be the only option. At that point, you have no other choice but to now start making your way out of that country in into the southern hemisphere, getting out of North America completely and into the southern hemisphere, which probably be the best option, easiest option, because it is still connected to America. Um, it'll be almost impossible to get on a plane and travel. Only military will be able to travel on planes, military and, and, and government officials. So that traveling on a plane won't really be an option. Getting on a boat, maybe, and being able to head across the waters, maybe. But for those that didn't happen, when all hell breaks loose, standing around and waiting for the government to come save the day, we know what the scriptures say. That's not an option. We've seen what happened in Katrina. We should learn from the past. The mark of the beast is not an option. That's going to be the only choice. And at the end of the day, the most high is going to rain fire on that place. All right? So there's, there's, even if you can find a, a, a mountain to hide in and, and be safe, that's still only a temporary solution. All right? Back to Revelation 18, verse 8. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the most high power who judges her. So that's the end game after it's all said and done. All right, and this is the burden from the burden of Damascus all the way up to the burden of Babylon, showing you the, 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 the parallel, how close we are to things happening. You know, America's judgment is going to come in one hour. It's going to happen quick. That's why they're getting all of these FEMA provisions in place. In FEMA Region 3, they got something planned for that area. We had what brothers and sisters call in maybe weeks ago talking about they had never seen so many police in Washington, D.C. And they're like, they couldn't understand why there's so much police in Washington, D.C. What's going on? We didn't know then, but now we see why. They're preparing for that area. They got 15,000 Russian troops there. I'll let you know that Russia... In America, the governments have no beef. But Russia will play a role in part in the roundup and destruction of America. They're going to use their soldiers to make this happen. All right, so there's a lot more we can talk about, a lot more scriptures to go into. So we have about 50 minutes left of overtime, and I want to open the lines up for brothers and sisters that have you know anything they would like to comment on or questions or any news they may have. Um, so we'll leave the rest of the 50 minutes for that. All right, so we'll go over to, we have the, uh, the 316 area code, 316 area code, you're on the air. Hello, uh, 316-0669, are you there? So we can not hear you. Okay. Six the uh six one four area code, you're on the air. Six one four twenty four oh one, are you there? Uh can't Hello? can't can't hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, um I just wanna I like to say sometimes when I uh this Brother, uh, the phone. I'm on an iPhone. Sometimes it just brings. Me. I don't need to pick it up. You hear me? All right. 
Yeah, I, I can I can hear you now. Say that again. I said sometimes being on these um, cell phones, they'll bring you in the queue uh-huh. without you asking one. Right. But I will right. say. Okay. So you. you uh-huh. All right. Yeah, I I was accidentally brought in, but you're doing a great job, brother. And the news is phenomenal. They trying to cut you off. You very prudent. Appreciate it. And we we'll praise the Father. Uh, you know, just glad to be able to get the information out so that you know we all have access to it. We can all be aware and uh, link into the Most High and follow. You know, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us uh, to safety. And keep up the good work, brother. And I'm praying for you all. All right, most definitely, the water, and we'll keep praying for you likewise. Much love. All right. Uh, the next caller we have the two six seven area code around the year. Hi, is it it's me? Yes, you're on the air. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I was so happy to hear your voice tonight. We missed you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praise the Father. Honest to God. Was was yes, yes, yes. You will miss. Um. I wanted to say that I asked a question. If when you're not able to come on or like Wednesday night when your car can't come on, could you guys play like an old version so we had something to listen to? You know, Wednesdays and Fridays have become very important to me. <laughs> right, right, I understand. You know, um, like some- it's hard. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say that sometimes radio stations, when they aren't going to come on, they play a replay. Yeah. Um, it doesn't actually give us the opportunity to do that, uh, but the, what it does have is if you go to the website, it will have an archive uh, section to where yeah. you can actually go on there and you can find whichever one that you choose. And just yeah, click you're, on right. you're right. Yeah, it, it doesn't, you know. If we could, we do it that way. We just click on an old episode and let it air, but it doesn't give us an option. Okay. Well, thank but, uh, you. Most, most definitely. And what I've tried to do is, is because of my uh, technological situation, the difficulties I've been having, um, I've been trying to play music over the past couple of weeks to give people something, you know, versus no show at all. So I have been trying to play some new music that's really just to send it in so we can at least have that as something that, you know, uh, bring our spirits up going into some fabric. Um, I definitely listen to the music, so, you know, and I would sit there and i just wait and hope you get on, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, ho- ho- hopefully I, I, I found a, a new way of uh, being able to get around the system and how it's trying to comply me to technology. So hopefully I found a way to trick it to get in um, and, and be able to do a show going forward and, uh, and see how blog talk is. I get on the busy night or whether they announce that they're having all types of problems with the site. So I don't know what's, what's going on. Yeah, I bet they're having problems because you're bringing forth stuff that they don't want people to hear. And and when I, if I'm not mistaken, are you afraid that something might happen this weekend? A way the serious thing is looking. I'm thinking that there's tomorrow is the perfect day with uh, college football kicking off Labor Day weekend. Uh, Four swing. It's the Sabbath. I think it's just the prime time for them to go ahead. They made a speech today that. They're not holding back like other other countries or allies don't want to join them. They're doing by themselves. So if they're going to hold, it's a serious thing. So. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to sign off. I'll let someone else come on. Thank you and Shabbat Shalom. All right. Most definitely. Bless you, sir. And Shabbat Shalom. All right. Let's go to the next caller. We have the 919 area code. You're on the air. Shabbat Shalom. What's going on, brother? Hey, Shabbat Shalom. How, how you doing? Not much, man. It's another week, man. It's living in Babylon, slave labor. But um, 
definitely do appreciate you bringing it out. Now we're able to feed on the actual manifestation point. You know, we we able to connect all the dots now and, and, and see it, and it's yeah. actually happening right before our eyes. Yeah, it, 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 it's surreal, and the mysteries most high revealing and allowing the Holy Spirit to work so we can all be on one accord and, and see it happen. Um, you know, it's, it's, this is a time that the prophets wanted to be in so they could see everything the Most High was going to do. So, you know, this isn't a time for us to be scared or fearful. This is a time for us to stand up and be strong in the faith, keeping the commandments, let the world know, you know, what side we're on. And, um, you know, hey, we don't, we don't, none of us plan to go down, but if we go down, let's go down fighting for the most high, you know. Uh, most right def- to, most uh, definitely. And, and Abraham's bosom, so, you know, we got to stand up and be strong, regardless of uh, whatever the situation is, and know, hey, this is not our rest. This, this world is just a temporary living uh, condition. We, we are seeking eternal life and immortality, so... Um, you know, it's, it's a blessing just to be here and even the understanding that we have. So let's just go strong in that. Definitely, definitely. Now, are you familiar with um, just bringing out a little news and information? You familiar with the um, the Agent Orange? What what, what happened in um, Vietnam? What they was doing out there? In Vietnam, I'm, I'm somewhat. Uh, you know, I have to understand yeah. it. So what now, you got. pretty. Yeah, now pretty much it was an operation that was, um, you know, using chemicals to actually kill out the um, the crops of the Vietnamese people, um, and they wow. would spray they, they they would spray the chemicals over the fields and basically kill them out that way. Now I was I, I was reading up on it, and one of the creators of Agent Orange was Monsanto. Exactly. That that exactly. company and like to, for them to kill the crowd because they ain't bioengineering all together as a whole company. So it's just like it made perfect sense, you know what I'm saying, for them to use the GMO food. You know what I mean? And, and they already have mm-hmm. you know, they, look. Mm-hmm. These people they break it down to the genetics. So they probably man, look, they probably been planting this joint for a long time. You know what I mean? Just testing it during the wars because they were they was killing man over like five hundred thousand people. Over there, so you know, yeah. what I, mean? I, I, I just wanted to bring that out, like, and I, that was weird when I was reading that. You know what I'm saying? You just regular Google search it, and you see Monsanto, Monsanto, you know what I mean? And they had exactly. they had their hand in it. Yeah, that, that's definitely. I'm glad you brought that out. There was some key points there with that. Um, uh, first, because we're talking about chemical weapons, we're talking about Vietnam, and we know that America was using those uh, chemical weapons on the Vietnamese, also. It was a false flag that allowed America to go into the Vietnam War with the Stupid Gulf of Tonkin incident, which they came out, I think, like in the 90s and, and declassified and said that it, was, it wasn't a real event, that it was actually fabricated, and that was what was used to go into the war in Vietnam. Was coming forward, they do the same thing over and over. Now we have 2013 chemical weapons in Syria, another false flag, another event that they're going to use as a pretext for war. And but this one, of course, is a, a whole larger scale than Vietnam um, because of what it's going to open the doors for. Um, also, I believe Roundup is also affiliated with Monsanto. Yeah, uh, yep, you're right. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like um, they control the pesticides too. So like, that's crazy. Like they, they control the pesticides that, that you spray on your foods Man, this thing is crazy. Can't it eat dinner no more. And and now they have certain um, they have certain laws in place against that you can't actually like go against my sponsor. Like they're protected by the American government. Wow. Yeah. This this, this thing is yeah. It's getting crazy out here, man. But I mean, through through the faith, man, we're gonna try to prevail and, and do what we gotta do. Also, um, did, did 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 you come across the article about the um, what is that? The IRS with the AR-15s? Yeah, where they're actually getting IRS agents, uh, uh, you know, gun gun ready also IRS agents and it's also another agency. Um, who is another agency that they're getting guns? Um, can't remember. Go ahead. Oh no, nah, I, I was bringing it up. That, that, 
something I ran across um actually the academy they had bought that out um last Sunday actually. You know what I mean? I bought that out. So that yeah, it, it was it's getting real, man. But um that's pretty yeah, much I all I had, man. Right? With guns and it was something else I seen to with uh, a, a a uh somebody with guns. Um it may have been the IRS, but I know I seen something this week where the agency that they like, why would they need guns? You know. Um so but yeah, it, it's uh you know, all the writing on the wall. So these things should just bring us closer to the most high. You really should have said about those that are sinning, that are living in sin versus those that are keeping the commandments, walking in righteousness. So the most high is not going to forsake us. You know what I'm saying? But we have to just uh-huh. make sure we're following, following them, following the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that's leading us away from the danger that's coming. You know, so. Yeah, man, you definitely, man. I did, you know, it was definitely a blessing, like she said, you know what I'm saying? Good to, to hear you back. You know what I mean? Continue to uh, <clears throat> pray that you continue to bring down this uh, bring down this system, bring out this good word. And, um, you know I mean? Yeah, I actually got a um, conference call with the brothers out here in, in a couple minutes. So, you know, definitely okay. good to hear you, though. All right, man, definitely. Thanks for calling in. It's always important to the show. And uh, y'all, y'all brothers continue to keep uh, holding it down with your rest and um, enjoy your Yes, sir. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right. And again, if you have a comment or question, just simply press one, and that will put you into the, uh, the calling queue. Uh, the next call we have is the 843 area code. You're on the end. The 843 area code, 9327. Are you there? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you Hello? now. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. How you doing? Yeah. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Great. How you doing? All right. I just want uh, to have a question. I mean, do you have any advice for uh, for those who are serious about, you know, leaving Babylon but just can't really seem to get you know, the proper, uh, I guess, instruction or, um, or just advice. I mean, a lot of us, you know, really want to get out of this place. A lot of us can sense the urgency, especially right now, if never before. But just don't really have the, the proper direction and instructions on what needs to happen uh, in order to make such a move. I sent a, a few emails to the uh, gathering as one at AOL. But, um, uh-huh. you know, I know you guys are busy and it's hard to uh, get back to everyone. And I guess I'm one of the ones who keeps, you know, falling through the cracks. Um, right. You know, you know, um, like what, what you do, man? Huh? Yeah, most definitely. Um, that's a good question. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have, have that question. One thing I will say right now is that we had a migration process in place. <clears throat> and uh, right now we actually uh, have it kind of on hold. Um, because we're trying to just reorganize things and get things back right. Um, you know, just the way Satan operates and works, he's always trying to destroy and tear down whatever it is that we build up. So, you know, you know, we're just trying to you know, rebuild some things um, and uh, and back to where it's, it's, it's organized and not confusing. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense to, to, to migrate people to the church when things aren't what they need to be. Uh, what you're likely to be with confusion if you add more confusion to the, to the mix. So, right. that, um, uh, as far as just upon yourself, um, you can definitely just take a look at different countries outside of the Northwest Hemisphere, I mean, North America from Canada to Mexico. Um, in any in, in areas, I would say, if you're going to go east, it would be around. Um, the Red Sea, um, uh, Africa, African countries. We want to look and see what African countries uh, would be a good place. Maybe uh, look at the pros and cons of all areas, cities, and countries. Um, also, you have South America, um, Central America for a time, for a short term. Um, of course, when things get bad, you know, you're probably going to get us out of that area. But South America definitely has some great uh, economies that are on the rise. There's definitely some uh, some places that are that are uh, I've heard that are, are beautiful places to 
to live. So that would definitely be like a, a, a second option to go east. Um, one thing I will say, you probably don't want to look at Europe because Europe is very expensive. So I've been in Europe before and you pretty much are going to pay twice as much there as you would pay in America. So you, you want a place where your money can, can go a long way where the, the dollar has uh, more of a value than the, the currency that's there uh, for that country. Um, so I, I don't know if you're African. South America is the best location as far as continent wise you would probably be looking at going. Okay. So you said um, it, it's good to be in a place where the dollar is, is worth more than the, the local currency. So I guess like Panama wouldn't be like a good place because they use the dollar? Um, I haven't looked at Panama, but I, I, would, I know, I've heard a lot of good things from, about Central and South America. So um, that would just kind of go into your research and looking at the pros and cons and weighing things out, praying, fasting, letting the Holy Spirit guide you. Because um, like I said, if you're looking to get out, trust me, the most high, it will open doors up. It, it may not happen in the time frame that you want it to happen, uh, right. but that's all part of the trial to the fire. Is we have to try our faith and our patience to see are we, are we worthy. Um, you know, cause a lot of people, like I said, have, have migrated to the church and they have actually made it bad to other people because they were still dealing with a lot of Babylonian ways. They were more so leaving in the past two years out of fear and didn't have themselves right. So right. they're carrying that sort of spirit to them and they're bringing them to church and, and it causes problems in the church and you have to go back and undo the damage that's been done. I understand. You see what I'm saying? So, so, um, if you continue, if you're continuing of uh, strengthening our faith in the Most High, letting Him show His true power, deliver us, and following the Holy Spirit when it says, "Okay, go through this door," hey, I'm going through that door because I have faith and I know that the Holy Spirit leads me that way because everything is in place in confirmation for me to know that's the Most High. Right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you. I feel, uh, feel, you know, a little, a little better. Um, thanks for the info and the advice. I uh, actually have a, a trip planned uh, next week. I'm going down to Central America just to scout the place out because um, I'm really serious about yeah, it. Guys, for a couple of yeah, years, and actually a year and a half, I'd say, and you know, been trying to get, yeah. you know, to family, but they, um, you yeah. know, some of you know, give me an ear from time to time, but others, uh, you know, you guys know how it is. It's just the same thing everybody else is going through. Everyone looking at you like you're crazy and whatnot, you know, but um, right. hopefully after this, hopefully, you know, if they would just look at the news, they'll be able to see that, okay, you know, this thing is real. This thing is realer than they than they actually think. And, uh, but, yo, just uh, thank you so much for taking the time, and um, you know, Shabbat Shalom, and uh, enjoy your Sabbath. All right, and just, and just real quick, um, this, this is, uh, you know, uh, just more, um, you know, uh, for yourself as far as uh, listening to let you know that I, I have had brothers and sisters actually email us. Uh, they, they, they have me to Central and South America, and they sent back a good report to certain countries there um, that, they, that they've uh, experienced, that they like, and that they've good, and, and a lot of our people there and stuff like that that, um, you know, just from either slave trade or just the original, uh, you know, indigenous people in those areas. And I, I have got a lot of good reports from that area. So I, I believe you will too. And make sure that you, uh, you know, contact us, send us an email, let us know how it will, you know, and keep us up to speed also so that we can, you know, who knows, maybe use that as an as a, uh, opportunity in the future, the other brothers and sisters looking for refuge. Um, okay, I so sure will. You can always you can always email uh, GOCC, uh, Texas at ymail dot com uh, and keep us up to speed on uh, your travels and we'll also send prayers out before you also so the most high with you and if you travel travel with us. Okay. All right, we'll um, do. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. All right, bless you, brother, 
All right. And the next caller we have is the 786 area code. You're on the air. Yeah, hello. Um, Ken, is there any, do you have any advice for this Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's my end or on, on, on your side, but it's breaking up a little bit. Could you repeat that? I'm saying, is there any way for people who are still in Babylon who financially don't uh-huh. have any passport? Uh-huh. Yes. Is there is there any advice that you can give as far as what to do or how to survive what's about to happen? Um, most definitely. As far as just not having the financial means to to, to make uh, an exodus? Yes. Is, uh, okay, most definitely. And I, I hear that uh, all the time, so um, it's definitely a good question, a lot you know, concern that people have. And and this is my um, answer to them, and I, I take them to the scripture. Um, the first place I take them is the second end of chapter 16. Um, second Andrew 16 verse let me get it Money is a good defense, but money is only good for so long. Money is only there 
you know, when right. it's when it's there, when it's when it's gone, it's gone. It's, it's, now it's even right. strictly on the most high when the money's completely gone. Mm-hmm. See, so that's what we right. try. Like those and our faith is really put on the line is now that there's no more money at all. And the only option is the market needs to go to spend itself. Now was our faith. Now are we walking um, with wisdom, being that pilgrim, knowing this case. The most high could come out of her, he could flee from the land of the north, I'm heading south. I'm you know, hey, this person here has a truck of people leaving, I'm leaving with him. You know, it's the angels will be before us too. So you may run into somebody you think is a person there to help you, that could be an angel. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, it's the most high is gonna do some miraculous things, believe it or not. Everybody's not going to to have the same story of how they made it. And All right, well, thank you so much. Power. All right, thank you so much, brother. And um, you, you guys are doing good. We really appreciate your support and your love and your kind words. Most definitely, we definitely appreciate you know calling in and and, and uh, support the show as well. And we'll continue to keep you and your family in our prayers. You have a blessed Sabbath. Yeah, I'll pray to say hi. You have a nice Sabbath too. Shalom. I'll pray to the Father, Shabbat Shalom. It's wrong, man. All right, so right now we have about um, 20 minutes left, and I, I don't see any other callers in the queue. Um, so what we can do is go ahead and just um, play a few tracks, be ready for the Sabbath. Um, we'll definitely keep everybody in prayer. Body of Christ, the most high will be done. And uh, make sure that y'all do the same for us. Um, if you are uh, wherever you're at, make sure that you're linking in with people of like mind, whether it's people in the church, uh, outside the church, these are the people that are going to be there for you when, when everything goes down because these people are going to understand what all this means. So now is the time to be seeking uh, this surrounding uh, and, uh, the circle of believers, preferably within the church, but, you know, you have to, you know, work with uh, the people in the most high place in your life. All right, so... Until next week, I want to say Shabbat Shalom. Bless, bless you all. We'll be back to Most High One next Friday, same time, same place. Until then, Kwam Yashallah, and we will see Zion soon. Shalom. Shalom.